What's going on, fam? Let's your lead pastor, Pastor RJ2 of the Jesus Center Church right here in Appomattox. And I want to say thank you for coming on on this uh, morning. Um, I just want to jump right in. And I want to talk about something quick before I jump into the message. You know, we're at the end of the year. And by being so, a lot of people are going through a lot. A lot of people are going through some depression. Some people may be stressed out financially or relationally also. Um, but, you know, I believe with God that you're going to make it. You're going to make it um, with everything you're working on, everything you're endeavoring to do. If you put God first and continue to depend upon him and not on your own strength and what you think you're going to be successful. So continue to work at it, continue to be on the grind, continue to put one foot in front of the other because you're going to make it. And that's the title of this morning message. You're going to make it. And I want to jump right in on the scripture. It's coming from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, and I'm going to be reading verse one through two. It reads on this wise, it says, but now thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, and he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you and through the rivers. They shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flame scorch you. Guess what, family? You're going to make it. So, family, I wish I could tell you that following Jesus means you will never face any storms. I wish I could tell you that following Jesus means that the waters of life will always be calm. I wish I could tell you that following Jesus means life will be rosy. And all of your days will be sweet. But guess what? <laughs> you know it. I can't. You can be both in the center of God's will and still be in a storm because storms come to all of us. But here's the good news. God is in control of the winds. He's in control of what's trying to stop you. And all he has to do is shift the winds and instead of holding you back, guess what? They would turn and propel you forward. They were meant for your harm. But guess what? He knows how to turn them around and use them for your advantage. God is saying you are still going to make it. He's saying I'm still on the throne. I'm still working things out behind the scenes. I'm still fighting your battles. I'm arranging the breakthroughs you need and I'm placing the right people in your path. See, family, what God has promised will come to pass. You're still going to get well if you're sick. You're still going to break those bad habits. You're still going to accomplish this year's goals. Where you are, it's not an accident. God may not send the storm, but guess what? He is in control of the storm. See, sometimes what God promises will look just the opposite of what we see. For example, God, you said that I was going to get well, but all I see is sickness. You said I would lend and not borrow, but all I see is debt, lack and struggle. Here's the key. You can't be moved by what you see. You have to be moved by what you know. Don't let the storm talk you out of what God has promised. In the book of Acts, Acts chapter 27, I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to paraphrase. And I'm going to paraphrase verses 39 through 44. This is what the passage of scripture is all about. Paul was a prisoner on a boat headed to Rome. He'd been arrested in Jerusalem for causing a disturbance. Even though he was not found not guilty, he had appealed to Caesar. While they were sailing on the several month journey with 276 people on board, they encountered a huge storm with hurricane force winds. For 14 days, they didn't see the sun nor the stars. The boat had become so beaten up 
and it was taken on water. The crew started throwing cargo and supplies overboard. They had quit eating. The scriptures also says that all hope of them being saved was gone. But in the middle of the storm, an angel appeared to Paul. And he said in verse 24, don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand before Caesar. God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. See, family, in the middle of the storm, when it looked impossible, no signs of things improving, Paul went up to the crew and said, it's going to be all right. Get something to eat because God promised that I would not only stand before Caesar, but that all of your lives will be spared. The next verse is the key verse. He said, and I believe it will be just as God said. See, God can make all these promises. But if we don't take the next step and say like Paul, God, I believe what you promised me will come to pass. But the promises will not do us any good if we don't mix them with faith. Family, what you're saying in the storm will have a great impact on how long you stay there and when you come out. If you talk about defeat, guess what? You're going to have defeat. In the middle of the storm, you need to declare what God promised you from scripture and say, I'm coming out of this. This too shall pass. God being for me is more than the world against me. What I'm trying to say to you is this. You got to get into agreement with God. Let's go back to the book of Acts, Acts chapter 27. Everybody on the boat thought Paul was sailing with them. But notice how God, God sees it. He said, Paul, everyone is sailing with you and they're going to be saved. See, family, you may have some enemies. People that look down on you. They think they have the upper hand. Guess what? Don't worry. You're not sailing with them. They're sailing with you. Nothing can snatch you out of God's hands. You may feel like you're on the boat of the opposition or feel disadvantaged at work. But guess what? People don't determine your, your destiny and they cannot stop what God planned for your life. God is going to get you to where you're supposed to be. This is showing us right here. A storm cannot stop what God has purposed. And here's the key. The destiny in you is greater than the storm around you. If you're going to come out of the storm, you have to know there's a calling on your life. But here's the problem, family. The enemy knows it. God knows it. But you got to make sure that you know it. See, what God has spoken over you is not just a nice thought. It's not just something that he hopes will come to pass. Guess what? It's a command. God told Paul, you will stand before Caesar. He didn't say, I think you will if the weather holds up and if these people don't get too upset. What God speaks, the only thing that could keep him from happening is not the storm. It's not the opposition. It's not the people. It's not the sickness. Guess what? It is us. If we don't believe you have to figure it out how it's going to happen. All you have to do is believe God works where there is faith. You're going to make it family, but you have to really believe in your heart that you're going to make it. I want to give you three points before I close. I'm going to give you three points. Here's number one. Write this down. Number one, you have to believe when you're in the struggle, you know, you're in the storm. You don't jump ship. That's number one. Don't jump ship. Here's why. See, it's only natural to want to avoid the problems, the hardships and the pain. See, nobody wants to go through it. But sometimes the Lord wants us to stick it out. Paul said, unless you abide in the ship, you cannot be saved. 
See, many times we will we'll be in a storm and we come to church faithfully, for example. But nothing seems to happen for our benefit. So we stop coming thinking it's a better way, but only to find out things are worse out there. The devil loves it when you get off God's ship, the church, because you don't have any protection from him when you're out there. I know everything is not right in the church family, but I'd rather be here with Jesus than to be out there with the devil. That's number one. You can't jump ship. Here's number two. Number two is you got to eat the word, meaning you got to consume the word of God. OK, see, we all know that when we are going through, we don't feel like eating anything. Sometimes the text says that that the day was approaching and Paul urged the men of the ship to eat. See, Paul gives us an example of how to survive a storm. He took some bread. He gave thanks to God. He broke it and then he ate it. Jesus is our daily bread that was broken for us so we can survive our brokenness. We internalize Jesus by eating his word. And while you're going through, guess what? It's time to eat. See, our problem is that we like the say, sailors are so distraction are so distracted that we don't eat the bread of life. And guess what? We become weak. At times like that, we need as much strength as possible. So we have to feed on the word of God. His word will calm you in the storm. Obey it and you will be able to walk in it and not drown. The text says when Paul ate, others got encouraged and began to eat. Your diet on the word will have an effect on those around you as well. That's number two. You got to eat the word. Here's number three. Number three is you got to stay focused on your destination. You got to know where you're going. You got to know the end result. But while you're going through, while you're treasuring, put one foot in the other, in front of the other. Guess what? You got to have your blinders on. You got to stay focused. See, after the sailors had eaten enough, they got focused on their destination and were ready to do what it takes to get there. We as believers have to follow suit. See, when you are trying to make it to your destination in a storm, you got to do what the sailors did. You have to lighten your load by throwing out some stuff and cutting some stuff off because it's weighing you down. You're going to have to get rid of it because if not, you won't survive. Not only that, you have to loosen some things so you can be guided in the right direction. There are some things that are binding you and preventing you from going where God is telling you to go. But you have to let it go and let God. I'm closing, but I want to give you something personal that I went through. And I'm not ashamed to say it. As many of you all know, that I was in transition, transitional pastor for five years until my pastor, Pastor Jones, retired. And when he retired after those five years, I became the lead pastor of Jesus Center. But guess what? Some people that was for Pastor Jones, but they were not supportive of me. They loved me, but they wanted me to do it their way. But this is what I've learned. You have to be you. There's no anointing on your life to be like somebody else. You are anointed to be you. At first, it kind of bothered me that they weren't for me. I was worried about what if they leave and they don't support me. But guess what, family? Things did not fall apart. We made it without their support. We made it without their encouragement. And we made it without their boat. See, sometimes God would take things away that we think we need. So we have to depend on him and not people. Can I tell you, you're going to make it. We're almost there at the end of the year. 2023 is, up, is upon us. I want to finish strong. Start next year with great momentum. So guess what, family? I got to continue to say I'm going to, to make it. And guess what? You're going 
to make it. You're going to make it. And guess what? If somebody in your life walks away, if that person walks away, guess what? They may not have been the friend that you thought they were. <laughs> and this is where we get in trouble because at times I know it's painful, but they weren't your savior because guess what? You already have a savior and he's got you in the palm of his hand. See, family, if they left you, then guess what? You didn't need them. If you had to have them to fulfill your purpose, they would have stayed. You have to accept that they were not part of your destiny and you got to move forward. As long as you're looking back, focus on what you lost and why they didn't stay, you will miss the new things that God has stored in for you and for your future. Family, you're going to make it. Continue to press. Get in the push and pursue the prize. Pursue what God has for you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we come before you as we close out this year, Father. I pray that your people, that we can finish strong and that we can have great momentum going into our next. You're saying as we are going through a lot right now, a lot of us, some of us are stressed out. Some of us are going through things. But you know what? I thank you for your work. You said that we're going to make it as long as we keep our focus upon you and the focus upon the things that you will have for us to complete. We're going to make it to the end. Father, I thank you, Father God, for perseverance. I thank you for endurance and I thank you for strength. Father God, help us, Lord, not to depend upon ourselves, but to depend upon you. And when we do so, we're going to make it to the end. Father, I thank you for this short word. And I pray that it would add value to those that are maybe listening in. Father, we love you and we thank you for what you've done and what you're going to do in us, to us and through us. In Jesus name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless your family. Thank you for allowing me this short time to speak a word in season to you that'll help you move you from here to move you to the place where God wants you to be. God bless you and I love you and I hope I see you back here same time, same place or next week. God bless.